Nancy Barger, and this is Jane Nelson, who is an illustrator. Thank you so much for being here today, Jane. Mm -hmm. um, you draw pictures for magazines and books. Is that pretty much what an uh, illustrator does? Well, yes. I, I mainly did textbook, textbook illustration, and, and you write some, some magazines. You uh, are known immediately by anyone who's spent any length of time around Chautauqua. And uh, at least I, I think of, that, of you that way. But mm -hmm. let's start with um, your history at Chautauqua. I, I know you have a picture to maybe show at the camera. Mm -hmm. right, right over there. Are you going to be over here? Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, this is a photo of... Uh, my twin brother John and I, when in the early, our early years, in front of the uh, bell tower. You're about five years old. Six. Six. <laughs> so uh, it's one of my favorite photos, since we spent all of our summers at Chautauqua, and um, <clears throat> uh, because my family uh, on my mother's side had a history of being a Chautauqua, I must uh, she and my two aunts would bring us every summer, and we'd rent a pl they would rent a place before we actually got a house in the early 60s. And uh, but before that, like I had like eight cousins that worked at Chautauqua during the season. Was that house the one on the brick walk? It was on the Miller. On Miller, okay. Yeah, 34 Miller, right above the library. So that's where we spent our teenage years. Good. And uh, we, um, <clears throat> as I never went to club, but I took class, I took art classes for the art for young people uh, with Vicki Williams, and I also modeled for Revington Arthur for his classes. And um, I enjoyed, really enjoyed um, doing that every summer. Did, did you feel that your talent yeah. was coming from another family member, uh, or were you the first one in your family to really um, go this route? I was the first one to go this route, but my father um, had a touch of artistic in that he sc did sculpture work as young, not very much, but he's the only one in the family that um, I know of that, that did any artwork. I found a picture of you <coughs> online in Pittsburgh. And it, it, oh. did you study art there? I did. I, yeah, after studying the summers at Chautauqua, I went um, to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh, and I graduated in the um, advertising and illustration. Uh, so you knew fairly yeah. early that you were not going to be, like some artists, creating um, on your own. You, you really like to... Uh, to look at something and represent it. Right, yeah. I think I decided that when I was six. That's early. <laughs> that, that I wanted to be a, a book illustrator. Very <laughs> Cause, nice. Because I, that's, I, I did that um, a lot. You, I mean, just little, little make-believe books or whatever. Uh, but yeah, I went to the Art Institute and enjoyed it a lot. I love Pittsburgh. Where, where are you from originally? Newcastle, Pennsylvania. So it wasn't too far from Pittsburgh. And, and, and you kept coming to Chautauqua, and to hear you tell, actually, what happened to me recently was I said to someone, when you think of Jane Nelson, what do you think of? And she said, well, um, I've been coming here about 15 years, and I've purchased her note cards. And I said, is, is that all? And she said, yes. And I realized that you, I knew from knowing you so long that you have a, a a full um, story to tell, and there's so much more to you than note cards. So uh, we're, you give credit to Chautauqua in, in a big way. Uh, and, uh, talk I do. about that. Yeah, I do give a, a big credit. Well, my first, but going back, my first job after uh, graduating from the Art Institute, um, they had a wonderful program there where they had, um, in, you could have interviews for jobs. And uh, so I was hired by American Greetings and by Hallmark, but I decided to go to American Greetings because it was in Cleveland. And so I worked for them and enjoyed it, but I really wasn't um, doing very creative 
my own style. And uh, during that time, when I was uh, in Cleveland, I would spend my weekends at Chautauqua in the summer, or as much as I could. And in that time, I met Paul and Mary Ritz of Chautauqua. Uh, anyway, they, they were um, producers and puppeteers that had a TV show in New York City at was that Ma time. Was Mary the one who had the lamb? Uh, no, no, that no, was somebody that was else. Somebody. But she was. They, a they I had, know. She, no, she had these. They had the, the giraffe, string puppets. The, the, they yes. had the giraffe. And did you know Mark? No. I, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so they they just saw me sketching one day, or Mary saw me sketching, and liked my work and took it to show to her husband Paul, and through them they took my work to an art agency in New York City and they accepted my work, so um, I did bring a piece of artwork that, um, it was Kirchhoff Wolberg Art Agency, and uh, they hired, or I was, I was a, they represented me for, well, to do artwork for, it was mainly textbook illustration, and I did do, uh, I did a lot of work for the SRA series, the Scholastic Reading, okay. elementary grades um, <coughs> books, and <coughs> um, and I also did perfume box designs for Windsong perfume. Oh, interesting! That, that was from really Windsong, the perfume. Yes, I did Christmas designs, like dis displays, counter displays for department stores, and the boxes. And this and all came, really through, having that, an agent came through in New York? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, another connection with Chautauqua was um, I, uh, <clears throat> well, I decided to, to move to New York. So in order, to, I, I saw an ad in the Chautauqua Daily, and John and Elizabeth Rogers of New York City wanted an au pair. So I called and they said I could do that. So I moved into, I moved to New York and lived there. And, uh, you know, they, they were, they had a wonderful address. It was 1 West 67th Street. It was right on the corner of Central Park and the Tavern on the Green. So it was wonderful. I took care of their two, two kids, two little boys, and, uh, and was able, you know, to do all my work. Um, and they had a place on so, the grounds, right? right? They, yes, they, they had beautiful they had a, White House. Yeah, they had the Haller House, which is uh, well, which explain that to people because they it was the house right next to the women's club, right? Which is one of the it was people remark about it so often. It's a lot of gingerbread right. and a lot of yeah. Yeah, it's gorgeous, right? So that was that was another link to Chautauqua with it that worked out really well, <laughs> and then um, so yeah, from there. Um, I, I lived there for a while, and then I decided to um, move back to Chautauqua, and I could still I could still do all my work from home wherever I lived. So I chose to come back and live there because I loved it so much. And An early form of remote working from home. Right. Yeah. It was. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I so so being um, at Chautauqua at that time. Um, th uh, the editor from <laughs> um, the, the Sh Chicago University Press saw my work in the bookstore. Oh, I started to do, I'm sorry, I missed a, a step. I started to do a line of postcards um, with the, um, well, encouragement of Jim Mead from Westfield. He, he was a publisher. I think the publisher of the, the Westfield Republican, Republican yeah. and had the printing business. So he printed some cards for me and showed me and then, or showed them to me and I said, sure, let's do that. <laughs> and then, so I had my work at the bookstore and um, <clears throat> the editor of this book, um, they were looking for a line artist for the um, Chautauqua, Chautauqua book, and it was published in 1974. 
uh, by the and it, the author was Theodore Theodore Morrison. So I was I met with him at the library, and then you know just the a lot of the illustrations I pretty much had, <laughs> and this was this this shows one that. The Hall uh, of Philosophy. Whoops. Yep. The Hall of Philosophy. And that's in the so, book. And that's in the book. So most of the book, or most of the illustrations are in that style, black and white. And uh, so that was, that was a, a wonderful opportunity. And, um, and then I, later I, per, I continued to do several other books for the um, University of Chicago Press. So, um, and then also <clears throat> when I was, while I was at Chautauqua, I, I met Gordon and Jerry Anderson <laughs> of uh, Greenhurst, New York, and they saw my work. And so they, they pursued me to do their, their work, or their, oh, cata that's, that's funny their, that's their catalog work. Yeah, I didn't realize. Whoops. I knew they were doing um, catalog work. I don't know. Whoops. But, uh, no, I think you just showed oh, it there. Oh, whoops, I'm sorry. There you go. That. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, so it, the catalog was titled North Shore, um, that's funny, North Shore Farmhouse Delectable Country Things, because for a while they managed the North Shore Inn, uh, oh, the hotel. So I didn't that's know how that. I knew them. Yeah, oh. and he was my, um, coincidentally, my guidance, or my counselor oh. for our class at Jameson High School. But anyway, oh. okay, so you did catalogs. So, yeah, it, <clears throat> and in that case, um, yeah, they, Brought over. I I would get the all the products that they were selling, and then I'd sketch them, and um, you know we went we went from there. So that was it was a really nice. Uh, so another work door for opened. Them. Another door opened, mm -hmm. and I did that for many many years, and then um, another link through the bookstore was a couple who owned a company called Mary Thoughts Incorporated, and they were had their company. Say it again. What was oh, it? Mary Thoughts Incorporated. Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, Mary, -R -R Mary mm -hmm. Thoughts Incorporated, okay. And from Bedford Hills, New York. And they saw my line work also, and I just brought this as a sample of a, of a cover of a catalog. Those are the toys, Christmas toys that um, represented uh, that the seasonal. I did two catalogs a year for them, one being Christmas and one being summer uh, or East, what was the other? Uh, it would be the spring catalog. And I did many labels for them for the toys that they sold. Well, so that's, cool. that's a sample. Of, and then, so once again, I. That's upside I, down. Oh, Oh no, that's right. Oh, oh it's a bad I, upside down. I, okay. I, I did their. They just sent me all the products and I drew them, but I thought that was a fun one, the Halloween. Very nice. And uh, so that that was a long going. It, in fact, I, I just they just stopped production like uh, maybe five years ago. So I continued to do all all of their graphics for them. And. So yeah, living at Chautauqua really, um, I I got a lot of uh, experience, I guess, of different. I saw that there, th there was a photo in the uh, digital or the archives of Chautauqua online showing you with um, fifteen cent postcards on racks at the bookstore. Oh right. The bookstore was a, a good place to find your work. Yeah, right. When I was going yeah. in and out of there. Yeah. So, yeah, I decided then, I think it was in the early 70s, to do uh, above and beyond the postcards. I did the, I did note cards, and then I did, I started a calendar in the mid-70s. And I think that, in my mind, is what you're best known for, because you, uh, at least I know, I was around people who always said, you said, well, what would you like for Christmas? And many times people would say, oh. I would like one of Jane Nelson's calendars. I have, you know, I've had them for years and I want right. the next edition. 
So, yeah, I brought, this is the, actually the last one that I did, this 2015, and it represents a lot of, I have the uh, drawings of a lot of buildings that were no longer at Chautauqua, so it was sort of a, rep represented the history of a lot of the places there. Yes, it's, it's um, bittersweet. I mean, I think of everything that I see you do it has a subtle way of being upbeat. M maybe it's sometimes in your winter scenes mm -hmm. you put a sleigh uh, w with the horses and th there's never yeah. anything depressing about, uh, about your work, uh -huh. but let, let's look at that again. So basically uh -huh. you're saying in this calendar uh, no longer is uh, the original Sharp Field is not there, the mm -hmm. uh, North Shore Inn's not there, um, the Glen Park cafeteria Glen Park. is gone. What else? Yeah. Uh, and then, well, on this side, the St. Elmo. Oh, sure. That, that was sure. gone. Well, actually, um, yeah, and the main gate has changed dramatically uh, from that, but even though we still have the in and out part, it's pretty much the same, but I, think I just. You uh, have probably, ha wouldn't you say that you have drawn every public or every institution owned property on the grounds? I have. Yeah. And in uh, my experience, just this summer, you did the cover of the um, uh, Women's Club, or excuse me, the, the Birtree and Garden Club uh, house tour right. booklet. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I've, I've done all of their graphics and for the Birtree and Garden Club for quite a while. It's I didn't, still I didn't, very much in circulation. Which I didn't think to bring. <laughs> <laughs> what but, else do you have on your show um, and tell? Well, I brought, um, let me see. Um, this is a map that I've done, that I was commissioned to do. By the institution? By the institution. And that was a fun project. I've done quite a few maps of Chautauqua because I did, I did garden uh, Bird Tree and Garden Club maps for garden tours, and um, and, and also just small maps for d for various people, other books that that needed it or would want one. I know and often the added had added works are um, um, are gifts. People like to buy something that has been matted that you've done and and give it mm -hmm. to someone as a gift. Right. Uh, and then for many, uh, several years, Highlights did the, had workshops at Chautauqua, which were really popular, and they, they had me do their graphics for them, and they used them for various, in various ways. And they also, whoops, hired me to do um, their Christmas cards for- Who, who did? Highlights oh, for highlights children. Oh, Highlights did, okay. Oh, that must have for, been fun. For for all their um, a national uh, yeah, children's they, magazine, it, teens yeah, magazine. it was their crisp, and they wanted to feature uh, children in them, and um, so I did that. And the theme was Chautauqua. Oh, nice! So, they, very nice. Um, and then you've got a book, uh, do you, well, or, or a coloring I, book? Yeah, um, yeah. I had fun doing this. This was. Uh, let me see. I did this in 1995, and it was it was just really fun, you know, to come up with. Uh, There's CLSC. You also did uh, a banner for CLSC, right? I did. Mm -hmm. What year was that? 85, same year as I did this. So. And um, yeah, and also the, um, oh, the ch children's school used used these. For, for oh, a while. Did they? Well, my, when my son was in there, they, um, I let them use, you know. They colored them, is what <laughs> they you're colored saying. Them. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nice. So that, that was a fun, fun book to do. And, um, oh, yeah, getting back to, um, oh, <clears throat> book illustration. At one point, I was hired by David C. Cook Publishing in Elgin, Illinois, and they teamed me up with Elspeth Campbell Murphy, who was the writer, and we did 15 books together. And it was really fun. I, uh, 
This, well, this, this, they did several hardcover, um, and anyway, this was. Oh, that is so uh, fun! That really yeah, shows your creative. It, this this has like three books in it, and uh, anyway, yeah, it was. So, so you're not. Uh, do you prefer buildings to people, or vice versa? Uh, I guess I do prefer building, but I I enjoy drawing people. Never thought about being an architect. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, and then you have something. This is somebody did ask me when I told them we were going to be talking uh, what you were doing now, and I see uh, um, a, a more recent project. Right. This was done a few years ago. Uh, Jack, a friend, uh, and he also was a connection at Chautauqua. Uh, he wrote this. Uh, children's book in honor of his father. And so I illustrated it for him. Jack Volker, which is a familiar name to people who have been around Chautauqua because he worked uh, for the administration right. and mm -hmm. recreation and right. administration at the Colonnade. Yeah. Yep. For many years. Many years. Yeah. So I, I tried to incorporate um, Chautauqua Into the theme book. In, in the children's illustrations. So that was, that was my last, pretty much my last book that I've illustrated. Do you have a studio at home, or where, where do you, I how do you do. work? I have a studio at home, and um, yeah, and that's great. I love working. I would, it, to uh, me, it, the, the, it, it appears that you would only need ink, a pen, and paper. It seems so simple compared to many uh, artists' uh, needs. Mm -hmm. Well, in in order to do a lot of the work, um, you have to have you do a lot of paste up. So, and then it's al also I have a light table, and so that you can line things up and get things um, uh, camera ready that right. way. So I have, but but basically I worked in pen and ink and watercolor for everything and. Um, uh, Jean, your family, you've got uh, a richness, as you said at the beginning, um, particularly, talk about your, what your husband does for the institution. Yeah, my husband, Joe McMaster, he's, uh, he, he gives the garden tours every Tuesday for Bird Tree and Garden Club, and he's a retired horticulturalist and grape farmer. Ah, uh, yes, we're going to come <laughs> back to that. At the, at the end, I wanted to ask you also, because it was such a, a poignant time in my life when I realized uh, during the AIDS crisis that I, I, the first person I ever knew to have that sickness was your twin, John. And mm -hmm. I know you said that uh, Chautauqua was sort of there for him. Uh, can right. you talk about that for a moment? Sure. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, it was, yeah, it was such a tragic and shock for our family, for him to, um, you know, to have that. So he was um, living in, he was living in San Francisco for a number of years, and then he decided to move back to New York. He moved to Brooklyn, and at that time he was, he was diagnosed. So um, we would, um, you know, it was hard to go in there to help, but we did have, we had acquaintance, acquaint, an acquaintance from Chautauqua that would let us stay at his apartment in New York so that we could be there. But during that time, um, it was decided with our family to move him to the Chautauqua house. And that way, so uh, my husband and I took, cook, took care of him. But before we moved him, I called Dr. Burke in Mayville and uh, asked him if that was possible and if he would, he would be his doctor, and he, he agreed. So that was so. And, the, and this was our county health director right. also. Go ahead. Right. And so uh, my husband, Joe, and I, we, we got him moved here and moved into the Chautauqua family home. And it was wonderful because um, he had the support of his family and friends, and not too many people had that. 
so it was it was um, it was early on it I was mean, we're talking it, well it was um, um, the mid to eight, late 80s and so it was about it was 88 maybe when he moved back to New York it was 19 or 18 nine, um, <laughs> 1980 <laughs> when I'm sorry I'm getting that wrong <laughs> um, I think you said 1990. Yeah, I think that's what that, you said. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have that's a, okay. Um, so we we moved John to New York the to, house to the and house, and um, it was the late 90s. And it was be, it was well, it was before but before the drugs were something was, that could help. It was help before, him. yeah. So he couldn't. He wasn't helped like uh -huh. that. And then you said the Brattons played a role towards they the end did. of his life. Yeah, they they got a tip that. We were caring for him, and Juanita was a social worker, so she she came up regularly, or came Dr. over Bratton's regularly, yeah. to talk with John, and um, and then uh, when John passed away in January of '91, um, Dr. Bratton was he did the eulogy for for John at the funeral in Newcastle. So that, that really meant a lot. And it was probably one of the um, first cases in Chautauqua County. I think it was. Yeah. I think, he, yeah, that's, um, yeah, he actually died at the Westfield Hospital and I mean they really had a, a team that was just so um, willing to help him. And of course there were others who, you know, they just, you you didn't really want to even tell anybody what was wrong. Yeah, I remember those days. Um, and so. then your other brother, Alan, is also um, well known to many Chautauquans. Talk yes. about Alan for a second. Mm. Yeah, my brother Alan. He's um, yeah he's been very active at Chautauqua for since his retirement. President <laughs> Bertrand Garden. He, he was the first. Or he he was the first the man. Second. Oh. Um, to be president of the Bertrand Second Garden. Second man? Yeah, yeah. No, Norm Carp. I think was Norm Carp was the first, okay. Um, so, yeah, he's, he's, um, he was active with Bertrand Garden Club, and he's been on the board of the Presbyterian House for, for a time now. Yeah, he's around a lot. I'd like to end by a Facebook post you had today. I love seeing in, in this modern day we're living in what you post. Mm -hmm. They're always sort of still lifes of their own and, and beautiful and uh, mm -hmm. many times uh, dealing with produce and crops. And mm -hmm. um, I had to, <clears throat> today you, you put something, the shiitake post, I guess you're growing mushrooms. Mm -hmm. In chicory, what are you doing that? Oh, then? With well, adding it to coffee? Oh no, that's, that's the plant. Oh. That's a blue plant. Okay. It's one of my favorite plants. And I walk daily all around the vineyards and are, you know, we have a, um, a grape farm in Portland and we still have 75 acres of producing grapes for Welch that have been taken over by a, a younger, a young couple. Yes, I um, know that. Oh. And, um, With ki little kids. Mm -hmm. three, three, young, three young kids. And um, so, yeah, I love being out there in nature and being able to and, enjoy and, it. And look, <clears throat> I just want to end with the hopefulness of um, the word that I don't use, but and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, Verizon. Oh. Uh, the, the, I, the ripening of the grapes so mm -hmm. that now you, you kind of know when you'll be out there picking or your people will? Yeah, they, they uh, gauge it by that and then actually they pick when they have to test, they do the sugar count and if the sugar count is a certain percentage then that's when they start picking. But it looks like a, a great year for, for grapes. Good, a great year for so. grapes. Thank you, Jane. You live a full life, and I'm so glad you could share some of it with us today. Oh, well, thank Appreciate you for it. asking. Thanks.